Hey guys, Heidi Easley here and thank you so much Heather and all of y'all for um, welcoming me and letting me be just a part of this group and I'm just so excited to spend 30 minutes with you and um, talking about painting a prayer and also talking about um, kind of co-creating with God and sharing a little bit about myself and um, kind of this, you know, fun art life. So. First off, again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Heidi Easley, and I actually teach people um, how to um, welcome. Thank you, Kimberly, for watching, and let me know if you have any questions during this. Um, but I actually teach people step-by-step -step paint parties um, all over the country, and I also teach people how to teach people to do paint parties all over the country. And so it's just so much fun, and I just want to first share... Um, Something that's so meaningful, and um, oh hey Heather, thanks for watching. Um, something that's so meaningful to me that so much so that you know you can see I have quotes and painted prayers on the back, um, but I also have this painted by my laundry area. It used to hang by my dining room table and um, in an old house, and now the house that we bought, I have it in this like little area of my laundry, so it's like happy laundry. But um. I think it's so um, good for this group, and it's called Our Deepest Fear, and you may have already heard it, but it's just so good to be reminded of it. Um, Our Deepest Fear by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous, Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So um, I just want you to think about that. I loved it so much that I painted it on my uh, some wood and put it by um, on a sign by my laundry. And it has been in many places. But it's just so important that we remember that we're all a child of God, that we're all... Um, you know, here for some purpose, and I think sometimes in the social media age, we can be in comparison all the time, and then it stops us or brings this fear on, like, well, they're doing it already, and I can't do it well enough. That is so not true. Oh my gosh, I tell people who I teach my paint parties to all the time that, um, oh, hey, Sylvia, thank you for being here, aww. Um, yes, yes, y'all share this if you think it might help some people. Um, but I tell this, you know, to the people that are teaching paint parties all the time. I have a girl in my group right now, and she just feels like, you know, oh my gosh, um, she just kind of feels stuck. And I'm like, it doesn't matter that, um, you know, that somebody else is doing this in another area. You need it for your community. Your community needs you. And just think of, you know, the change that you could have with art and with healing. I talk so much about that. So, um, so just a little bit about this painted prayers. This is totally new to me. Um, I have always been a painter, have always been an artist. Um, I've never, ever, ever claimed to be the best artist, ever, okay? I've never claimed for being the best artist. But I have always said that I think God gives us something that we know we love to do. And I love to paint. And not only do I love to paint, but I love, love, love to see other people who have never painted before leave with something like this, or leave with something like this, or leave um, feeling confident because they've done something great. And you know, this is another thing that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit too. Enjoy every moment. And you know, people who are beginner artists and they leave with a sunflower that looks like that, like they are excited. You know, they're like, it gives them confidence and it kind of... You know, that confidence and that feeling can go on to other things. So um, I was reading a magazine. I was on my way to a business trip, and I was reading a magazine, and it had Gabrielle Bernstein, Gabby Bernstein, if y'all know who she is, and do a heart or a like. And um, this came up in her interview, 
and it says relax it's gonna be great okay and this was all about what she was thinking of and she, you know the interviewer asked her like what would you tell your younger self what would you tell your younger self if you were um, if you could say anything oh good morning Christy thank you for being here and um, what would you tell your younger self if you could you know know anything in the future and she said this she said relax it's going to be great and every time I read that I cannot stop smiling because so many times when you know whether you're um, doing a business or whether you're you know going through life as a mom as a sister as a wife as a um, daughter whatever the case may be sometimes it is overwhelming and it can be so Sometimes you feel so isolated and so alone. And when I read that, I mean, again, I'm just smiling. I'm like, it's gonna be great. It's gonna turn out great. And so I loved it so much, I could not get it out of my head. So I painted it. And then I saw where, and again, I'm another Gabby thing inspired. Um, if you haven't read some of her books, Spirit Junkie, it's really, really good. And um, But this one right here, and I know it might be backwards for you, but I just so had to paint this one because it's a prayer. She said she decided, you know, she was in this time where, you know, and, and I do this. I don't know if y'all do this, but like when I go to pray, a lot of times, you know, yes, thank you, God, for everything you've given me. Thank you so much for my family. Thank you for all the blessings. And then... I'll be like, okay, it's like a checklist. Um, can you help me with this? Can you heal this? Can you do this? Can you, it's like all these to do's, you know? I mean, I am so guilty, you know, I will do that. And so, so this prayer she said, it was, what would you have me do? So what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And to whom you would have me say it to? And so when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, it was like a, a step back. And so she said every morning, that's what she says, you know, like that's her prayer to God every morning. And I thought, okay, that is very memorable. Like I have got to focus more outward service, love, all about that outward. And so of course, being an artist, I had to paint it. And I actually have this right at, like when I wake up, it is the first thing I see on my wall in my bedroom. So every day when I start my morning, and now, you know, it becomes a habit, you know, God, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? No matter what, you know, my prayer can go on from there and it can say more. But for the most part, that is the start of my day. And I just started that about four weeks ago. And um, I don't know, it just kind of starts the day peaceful. And it just kind of makes you, yes, it is so powerful because you're um, kind of turning over. You know, Not that I don't have you know these things I have to do today, right? But in the moments you know, of what's happening, if I'm talking to, I gotta send in a, a tax thing for my student loan, you know, every year for my student loan. They have to know my taxes to know how much student loan I have to pay that, that month, every month. And so, um, you know, how am I gonna talk to the lady on the phone? You know, am I gonna be a jerk because I've been paying student loans for 500 years? Yes, they suck, <laughs> you know? However, I don't have to look at it that way. Um, so this is kind of like um, how to paint a prayer. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of this on how to do this so you basically what I do is I just take a canvas it can be a small canvas a little canvas whatever you feel and then I just start to um, do like kind of like some blues with some whites I'll take a bigger brush so I mean all this stuff you can get really cheap and do it yourself and you just kind of up and down with white and blue and then all of this texture this is like what I have so much fun doing so I'll take bubble wrap, I know, real techie here in this art world that I'm in. You gotta make your own art world. <laughs> um, I take bubble wrap and I'll put the colors I want. So I might take some, some purple, some blues, some blacks, whatever colors I feel like. Like this was going in my bedroom so I wanted it to be this bluish color. And then I will actually dip it and just pull it apart, right? Dip and pull, dip and pull. And then it'll actually, if you do it while it's wet, it will take some of what you've put down and move it along. So you get all of these different textures and colors. And then another thing, again, you don't have to be an artist to do this. 
I'll take things like this. This is a well, very well used stencil. Okay, this is a stencil I've had for years and I am obsessed with. So much that it's probably caked with about 50 coats of paint. And I'll just like barely stick it on here. It doesn't even have to turn out exactly like that, right? I just kind of barely stick it on there and then take my brush, any kind of brush. You can even do cheap stencil brushes. Oh, thank y'all. And if y'all have questions about any of this, um, please ask. If you have questions about painting a prayer, um, co-creating with a, um, co-creating with God. I did a interview with um, Akiana Kramerik all about co-creating with God. It's on my YouTube channel, um, Texas Art and Soul. So if you want to watch that, it's really, really great. She, I've interviewed her twice. She's the the famous um, child prodigy um, Jesus painter. She's done the Prince of Peace and many, many others. And I've had the honor of interviewing her twice. And I was like, I, f I mean, I was so excited because I'm like, I can't believe she's talking to me. Like, you know, it's just one of those moments. Um, but the co-creating with God interview that I just recently did, I, I think it was last month or the beginning of January, um, is so good. So if you want to see that, it's at Texas Art and Soul on YouTube. Um, and I'll put it in the link below in a minute. But anyway, and we talk a lot about co-creating with God and kind of how we can tap into that. And a lot of times, I think too, it's just um, letting go. Like, so you might be looking at this and going, I'm not a painter, Heidi. I've never painted before in my life. I teach thousands and thousands of people a year how to paint that have never painted in their life through online or in-person events. And I can tell you, if you're out there looking for something, you've been thinking you need a hobby, you're not really sure how you're um, supposed to do things. You know, I'm not saying you gotta quit your job and go be a painter, but I am saying that people, I've had you know so many talks with people and so many emails after an event that people are like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe, you know, you know, I'm suffering from PTSD or I've been so depressed or, or, oh, that's great, Sylvia. I'm so glad. And, um, you know, I've had people that are like, I just needed time. You know, I just needed time to paint. And, um, and they might not have ever done it before. And then they discover this hobby. It could be a total hobby. And then they discover that they're kind of good at it. And then they discover that they kind of like it. And so it doesn't have to ever turn into a career, but it can turn into you painting a prayer that you're so proud of that every morning you wake up and you're like, yes, you know, I, I got this. I can do this. You know, this life is about service and love and I'm here to do this. So, um, so yeah, so remember that it does not have to be about um, being the best artist. So, so yeah, so remember that when you're trying this. Hello, Brenda. Thank you for being here live. I'm so excited. So yeah, so just adding these little things in. And then um, I love, you know, like going to Michael's and finding random new stencils or online. They have tons online. And this is another one. And again, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how you can stencil and stencil something that's not, you know, I don't have to use this whole stencil. Oh, I'm so in love with the colors in Canvas. I always buy something at the store but don't have enough courage to start. Well, this is an easy, easy way to start. And again, I did the same process with this one back here and this one. I wanted this one. I actually covered that entire canvas with um, turquoise, metallic turquoise and blues um, from Artist Loft. Yes, I bring it all step by step. So you can take stuff and actually make you know, stuff that you would buy from a store and pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for. You know, you could do easily for 30, 35 bucks on a large canvas, like a 24 by 36. And um, this is Artist Loft Acrylic. I just love, love this. And um, But they have lots of metallics at Michael's. But you literally just, I don't use all of it. I just kind of place it wherever I want. And maybe I want to go with the dark blue. And I just take it. And I'm actually, it's kind of moving, so it might look a little funky. But I'm just up and down, and then I just pull it out like that. So I kind of put it on top of a blue. So there you go. You can see how you can be an artist, make a mistake, and then just paint right over it. It's no big deal. And I always tell people, I'm like, mistakes? Not with acrylic paint. It's so easy because it, like, literally dries in five minutes, and then you can paint right on top of it. All right? So I'm just kind of dabbing it 
and then pull it apart and then now I have another texture. So the reason you have all of these textures is because whenever you put your stencil, whenever you put your quote on top, you really want that quote to just kind of have this fun, exciting background. So again, the reason why I started painting these prayers, I've always taught like this kind of painting. I've taught canvas painting for uh, many years, many, many years. Um, and then I started teaching wood art and palette art. And then I just really, um, honestly, just kept getting inspired. And the more I got inspired, the more I started thinking, like, how can I, I take this to the next level? I'm so, because I teach so many beginner classes, um, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I feel like I didn't have time for my own art. But I wanted to be inspired because I love painting. And so I started, you know, because I paint pretty much every day, no matter if it's for my customers or for a commission or like last night I stayed up late and painted my entire floor. And um, I'll, I'll post pictures below if you want to see it. But it's, you know, like flowers and moons and it's like all painted. And um, I kind of just went crazy. Um, last night and just had a blast. I stayed up till one just painting all over my floor because I redid my office. Um, but yeah, so it was concrete and I didn't want to put the wood, the traditional wood down. I wanted it to be artsy. And so I was like, yeah, you know, and my husband's, he's really great about like, if it's my area, he doesn't care what I do to it. He's like, just have fun. And so, um, so yeah, so I think just, you know, knowing that, um, I just wanted to kind of go to another level and, and as far as like, you know, when I pray and, and again, it came back to that. It was all about, yes, thank you, God. But then it was all about like, you know, my checklist of what I need and what I want in life. And then it started to be about like, no, it, it has to be more than just me spouting off a list to God, you know, to, to give me this or, or do this for me. And so when I came across that prayer from Gabby, I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to paint that. Like, I cannot get that out of my head. I have got to wake up every morning and paint that. So um, I'm going to share just a quick little, um, story about me and how I got started in a business, okay? So um, about 10 years ago, me and my husband and my little bitty daughter at the time, she's 11 now, but we went bankrupt. Like, I didn't even know, like, I thought bankruptcy was on Monopoly, pretty much. That's really all I thought it was. And, um, and then our mortgage, we were living in Florida at the time, our mortgage skyrocketed, um, all of our, I mean, we just couldn't keep up. And then my husband lost his job. And I was teaching art at the time at a public school and making like 21000 a year. It was ridiculous. And we just couldn't make it. And so we, somebody suggested maybe you should file bankruptcy and get out of your house. And I was like, no, there's no way. I mean, I honestly, guys, I haven't even started talking about this until about three years ago. And this was about 10 years ago when it happened. I was so ashamed. Now when I say the word bankruptcy, it is totally different like I feel free I feel so much it's so much different it's light and dark it's night and day compared to how I was 10 years ago and it was because I just had this feeling of shame and guilt and isolation and I can't talk to nobody about it because I'm so embarrassed I'm trading cars three times in one year because I can't even pay it you know I can't pay my electric um, I'm paying in pieces. I mean, it was just so awful. I had just such a such a bondage around that. And then, um, then I remember using art to heal. I didn't realize I was using art to heal at the time. But I started and ask you know um, put in the comments if you've ever like used art to heal or if you've ever painted before I just want to know if there are any artists out there or if you're kind of thinking about maybe painting trying a painting now put it in the comments if that's you but um so what happened was I was using art to heal and I started we had moved we had gotten out of our house we moved into an apartment I started selling these little mini wooden surf well I didn't start selling them yet I started painting these mini wooden surfboards just to kind of like, you know, we had a saw and I'm, I, that's what I always go to. I just always go to art. So I started painting these mini surfboards. And so what happened was I took them to school. Oh, good, Christy. You love painting. Oh, hey, Jamie. Thanks for watching. And um, so I went to school and I had about 850 students, you know, through the week. So about 150 or so a day would come through my classroom. 
So I was going to paint these on lunch breaks, okay? And I had them sitting on the side of the cabinet and every kid that came in there was like, Miss Easley, Miss Easley, paint me a surfboard. Oh my gosh, put my name on it. Can you paint me a surfboard? And after about the hundredth kid did that, a light bulb went off and I thought, oh my gosh, I think I could use this and make money and help my family get out of the situation. So, oh, Sylvia says, yes, I did use Art to Heal last summer in a very heavy and dark moment, but then I never got back. Oh my gosh, we got to get you back to it. And I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, yeah, but it can totally transform me. I mean, I wake up getting so excited about like painting my floor and projects and it just, it just brings me to the next level. I just, I love it. And I know, you know, God gave me that gave me that. I think he gives us these things, not just one thing, but several things and that we can really use if we want to, you know, and we can tap into that and he can be a part of that with us. So anyway, so I take these wooden surfboards and I go up to and um, this little, um, this mall, if you've ever been to Panama City Beach, there's this outdoor mall called Pier Park. Well, Pier Park is like this nice, you know, kind of outdoor mall and um, my mother-in-law goes with me and I take this like, it's like a bad one. It's, you know, we hadn't even got it routed. It's just kind of like rough cut surfboard and it's decorative. And I'm like, you know, I, I get a meeting with the guy with the mall and I'm like, can I sell these at your mall establishment? Like your beautiful fine establishment. And can I sell these surfboards? So we work out a deal and I end up renting this 10 by 10 foot space of concrete in front of Starbucks for a thousand a month three days a week for two months, okay? 12 hour days. And so we start sawing. My mother-in-law knows I need help. I have no money, so we go. I mean, we're just cash flowing. Whatever we're making, my husband gets a job at the apartments we start working at, or that we start living at, and we start sawing out these surfboards. And we get ready to set up. I mean, we literally did everything we needed to do. You know, I have like, you know, a little girl. I think she's two at the time. Little bitty toddler running around. I'm trying to like paint surfboards. She's painting them with me. I have pictures of like me working on designs. And then she's beside me just painting the whole thing. <laughs> all different colors. And um, in the day of setup, oh my gosh. Um, so I'm like all set up. I'm ready to go. I got my surfboards. I'm ready to take orders. Like who's going to buy, right? nobody is buying and I'm like oh my gosh I mean you know in my 20s you know with a baby I'm like thinking there's no way out like this is it you know I mean now that I'm almost 40 I've realized that you have several takes at life and you have several times that you get to fail and the more you fail the more you learn oh my gosh so so at that time I thought this was it like I've had my chance, I've made my bed, you know, I got a line, I'm done. Like, you know, I'm cooked, I'm done, that's how I felt. So my mother-in-law senses my anxiety and, you know, freaking out. And she says, hey, let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings, which was right across the street, I'll buy you a drink. Hey, Holly, thank you for joining. And, um, and so I go to Buffalo Wild Wings, my mother-in-law, we're at the bar and she's buying me some drinks and some shots because I'm like, this was plan B, what am I gonna do, you know? And I'm taking a few more drinks. I don't have a plan C, this is it. Like I'm at that moment, Buffalo Wild Wings, getting tipsy thinking, life is done. Like this is all I got. Like God, why? We've lost everything. I literally pulled the shells out of my brand new baby's closet. You know, I had painted murals, her name's Pixie. I would painted Tinkerbell murals. I had a Tinkerbell lantern where she was going to do her homework. I mean, I had it all planned out. I thought I was doing things right. I waited nine years until I had my, my kid, you know, and all these things. And I'm at the bar drinking away going, I have no other plan. You know, this was it. Hey Peggy, thank you for joining. And um, yeah, I was just like so devastated. And then my husband calls and he's like hiding get over here, we have orders. I was like, what? He's like, get over here, we have orders. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, we have orders, we have orders. And so I, I, you know, Shree, my mother-in-law, she's like, just, you know, go, go. And so I walk, tip, you know, tipsily across the street. And I, I look at my husband and he's, we were doing these paper tickets. You know, they would write what they need, what they want, their name, what colors, you know, all of that. And he holds up these like stack of tickets. And he's like, 
get to painting. Heidi, start painting. And I mean, from that moment, I was flat on my face. I was totally flat on my face. And in that moment, it was like God catapulted me up to the top. And I I got this unshakable confidence, which I, I use to this day. I have never, when I make decisions, I think back to that moment always. Because at that moment, God was telling me, not only Heidi, and I'm gonna tear up thinking about it, because every time I think about this moment, it brings back this, this, this memory. And my husband's standing there with those tickets like, paint, paint. And it was like, God was like, not only Heidi, do you have to, you know, um, not only are you gonna thrive, not only are you going to do fine, not only is this gonna help your family out of this financial situation, but you're going to be able to do it doing something you love, which is painting, which is art. And I remember at that moment just being like, oh my gosh. Okay. So I started painting, like, you know, laughing and painting the whole night. And we went on to sell over a thousand surfboards, which meant this girl who painted about one surfboard or painted about one thing a year. Literally, I would paint one painting a year. It took me forever. I had to learn how to paint fast. If I wanted to make money for my family, which was my goal, I knew I had to paint fast. So if it was raining, I was in the back of my Jeep, like literally painting a surfboard. If it was, um, if it was, you know, I had, like sometimes I'd have 60 surfboards in a night. I would stay up till two or three in the morning and then deliver them the next day because every surfboard I sold was 20 more dollars to my family's future. Then we started making bigger surfboards and selling more decorative and we ended up making over $20,000 just in two months, three days a week with me painting. And that moment of just like, oh my gosh, you know, God can help me do anything. Like it was insane, it was amazing. And um, so I knew, you know, doing that full time, trying to, you know, part time, trying to teach full time in Florida wasn't going to be sustainable. So we moved back to Texas and I started teaching there. But of course, I could not get rid of the entrepreneurial bug. And I knew I had to do something new. And that's when paint parties started. It's kind of hard to sell um, surfboards in North Texas. <laughs> when surfboards in North Texas. Um, oh, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I'd love to share more. I know we're coming to our time, our end here, but I think that's why I'm so passionate now about teaching other women how to build a business or how to, you know, teach people how to teach paint party, you know, teach paint parties because it's so important. Not only do people heal through art and you're sharing something that a beginner, a beginner can totally do. You know, this was all so simple. And now you, you know, if you have a, a cameo or if you can freehand or, you know, you can write a quote on there, it's so simple. And, um, but what I love is that, you know, not only am I teaching people how to paint, but I'm also teaching people how to start their own paint party business and how to start their own online art business, which is so cool because then you can make your family's finances better too. So it's all about like, you know, I feel like God's just kind of brought that message to me. Like you're not only teaching people to paint, you're teaching people how to, um, to better their family, you know, bring money into their family, whatever reason that might be. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you, David, so much. Thank you for letting me be on here and talk to your audience. Um, and if you want to know more about me or you can message me, um, Brenda says, great. Thank you for sharing. Miracles happen every day. Oh my gosh. Miracles. Today is the one year anniversary of my dad's heart transplant. Since his, oh, I'm gonna cry thinking about that. It's an emotional day. Um, yeah, my dad got a heart transplant last year on March 13th, and um, we stayed up all night. The surgery took all night. And um, since that moment, man, I've always been like, God answers big prayers. Like, oh my gosh. Like, expect miracles, people. Like, expect miracles. They are there. So if you want to know more about me, I'm going to drop a link if you want to know about teaching paint parties. Um, 
Yeah, I get to see my dad Thursday. I'm really excited because it's just insane um, what him and my mom have gone through, and especially the past several years. But to know now that he's doing better, they bought an RV. They're going to start traveling when we thought he, we were about to lose him. So it's like he gets this second take on life and um, thanks to the donors. So, yeah, we are all donors in my family. <laughs> We're like, take anything you need to help somebody else. Um, because I see the benefits, you know, this, the benefits of what it can do for a family. Um, so, yeah, if you want to know about how to teach a paint party, I'll drop a link in there and it'll give you five reasons why it's totally free. And then um, also, if you want to know more about how I teach people online how to build an art business, um, message me. I'd love to talk more. And then I'm also going to be teaching this online, a virtual paint party. So I will actually send you the wood. I will send you the tracers for this. And then you'll actually be on a two-hour paint party with me, and I'll teach you step-by-step. Step. So, um, so thank y'all so, so much for being here. And I'm so glad I got to talk to y'all and get a, to be a part of your life today. So, um, yeah, expect miracles. And Feel free to paint prayers. They're so much fun. Bye, guys.